Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says that is of three types. Now here what we learn is what he's talking about is the approach towards da'wah. Okay? Uh, last week we looked at the conditions, but here he is talking about the kinds of people that you are dealing with. So when he says that is of three types, meaning person that you are speaking to is of three types. Number one. Now again, this could be a person who is already Muslim. So let's not understand from that one here that this is only referring to the kuffar. Number one, a person wants the truth and you are now tasked to show him the truth and where it is. In this case, Ibn Qayyim is saying, as the Messenger of Allah, they must use gentleness and they must use hikmah and they should not debate or argue. It says dialogue. Dialogue, obviously, is necessary. You need to have a conversation. But what this means is debate or argue. So we should change that. Because the person already wants the truth. So you don't need to be harsh with that person. You show them the gentleness and the true nature, the true nature of the brotherhood of Islam that you're calling them to. The second scenario, or the second group of people that you will be talking to, a person who is upon batil, who is upon falsehood. And that's like the first one. But this person, had they known the truth, they would follow. The first person, they're kind of already there. The second one, they're oblivious. They carry on in their batil. They are living their life upon falsehood. But you know that, you know, there is actually a glimmer of hope here. There is room for this person to come around. So it's the same thing. Now here, this is something which is really important. Ibn Baz, I remember a fatwa from him. I mean, this is found from, you know, this is just, it's common sense anyway, but I'm just trying to say that there's so many opinions from the scholars on this, right? So many statements, should I say, that they say that the, the asal and the origin in da'wah and in nasiha is that you were gentle. The Messenger of Allah has been praised for his akhlaq, not for his harshness and him creating labels and, and funny nicknames to ridicule people or to expose people or to label people, all these different things that people do and to be hasty and, and rush towards, you know, trying to find fault in people, etc. This is not the asal. The asal is, as you can see here, as Ibn al-Qayyim is saying, him or Allah, is that if you know this person has made a mistake, had they known the truth, or the person knows that he's on a mistake, he knows that, you know what, my life isn't so good right now, or I'm a Muslim already, but this can't be right. The Islam that I'm on is not right. So then what do we do? As they have said, use hikmah. Use gentleness. The, the, the objective is this person goes away with an understanding, not for you to go around showing, you know, how overpowering you are with your speech. But here we have a third category of people. Now here you have to exert this one with caution because a lot of people from the, the people of knowledge have said, this person should not be approached at all. A person who is a stubborn rejecter, meaning this person is going to argue with you, this person is going to debate with you, this person is going to throw misconceptions at you and all of these different things. In this case, the person must open up dialogue. But who is the person that opens up dialogue? Like we have said before, the conditions must be fulfilled. Like he has ilm. He has enough ilm to know that, okay, this person is an atheist, so he's going to say certain things and I'll be able to respond with it. But if you know that the person is an atheist or he's a Christian and you don't know much about Christianity, then what you should do is just refrain. Open up dialogue, but if you are able, open up dialogue in the best possible manner. And if they don't want it, and they are being disrespectful, and they are insulting, and they are doing whatever, then the person must leave them with respect. Rahimullah. Look at the hikmah in this. Therefore, there are three categories of people. First category, person who wants the truth. And if they want the truth, use hikmah. The second category, a person who wants the truth, 
Well, sorry, the second category is a person who will accept the truth, but they are upon batil. For those people, again, use hikmah. But then you've got a third group of people who is the person who's going to be a stubborn rejecter, a person who's going to argue with you, a person who doesn't like what it is that you're saying, then upon you is just to explain the situation to them if they don't accept it and move on with respect. Don't hold on to it. Don't engage with them. Just carry on with what is going to benefit yourself. Right. Sheikh Muhammad, rahimahullah, then says, now here, this is part of the explanation that we've got. Sheikh Muhammad, this is actually an example. Um, Sheikh Saleh al-Sheikh gives us an example from the life of Sheikh Muhammad. He says, Sheikh Muhammad, Ibn Abdul Wahhab, called people to Tawheed, and they accepted it. And some of the people, obviously, that are around him, rejected it. And those people who rejected it, they rejected it because of two key areas that they couldn't understand. Number one, they saw him as a person who was making takfir, just saying everyone is upon shirk. If you go to the grave, you're doing shirk. So they say, oh, you're calling us mushrik now then. So they rejected his da'wah because of their own ignorance and their own misunderstanding. Or because of the people, they wanted to fight him for the sake of fighting him such as the Ottomans, such as uh, Banu Khalid, as we kind of covered earlier, such as Uthman ibn Mu'amma, towards the end of the life of um, Sheikh Muhammad, Uthman ibn Mu'amma, who used to love him before, ended up hating him and wanted to fight him. Therefore, even though Uthman ibn Mu'amma said that your 